John Sanchez, we're sitting at the University of Little Rock, Arkansas at the annual Sequoia Institute uh, presentation. And uh, you're here from uh, Penn State. And uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and your title there, what you do. And uh, let's talk a little bit about current affairs and, and your involvement at Penn State, what you feel you're uh, contributing to uh, uh, native uh, education and other issues there. Okay, um, I am a, I'm an ethics professor at Penn State University. I'm a, a Miyake and Chiricahua Apache. Um, I do a lot of research at uh, the intersection of news media and American Indian cultures because news media is supposed to be the truth. You know, when you turn on the television at night and you find out that there's a storm coming, well, you believe it, you know, because it's on the news and it's supposed to be the truth. But what about American Indian cultures? You know, when you see American Indians in the news, uh, what kind of imagery is being portrayed and what kind of stories are being written about American Indians? I've just completed a study where I looked at 10 years of, of news reports from the big three, ABC, CBS, and, and uh, NBC. And um, it turns out that there was about 177,000 news reports in that 10-year period by all three. And I counted the number of just on American Indians. And on American Indians, there were only 98 reports combined, you know, from all three networks. The next step would be is to uh, find out what these news reports, you know, what they, uh, not what they said, but what kind of imagery, you know, were they, were they showing? Well, the number one image, you know, that came out were images of American Indians in beads and feathers. Now, I can go through the rest of them, you know, but that was the number one image. And so what that says is that there, one, are few images of American Indians anyway. And so the few images that do come out of the news, which is supposed to be the truth, the ones that are coming out are of Indians in beads and feathers. Now, you might think, well, so what, you know? Well, so what is, is it means that when you're in the grocery store or you're at the Walmart or you're shopping at the Pennies or at the mall and uh, somebody walks up to you and says, hey, are you, are you an American Indian? Are you native? And you respond, yes. You know, one of the things that they, they seem to come up with a lot is, well, you know, so you must have a bow and arrow or you must have buckskins or, you know, where's, uh, where's your horse? You know, things like that. And, uh, and what happens then is, is that, you know, there's going to be a confrontation, you know, because you go, well, you know, well, I, I don't have a horse, you know, I came here in, in, a, in a Dodge you, pickup. You right? don't have a horse and you don't live in a teepee. That's true. Typical. It's, it's, what, it's, it's what you have to say, you know, but then they, they begin to wonder if you're really American Indian or not. And you, you end up defending yourself. Do you find that there is a contrast be, uh, within these presentations that kind of careen behind these images of beads and feathers uh, and they jump over everything into rich casino Indians? Absolutely true. You know, the one thing that I found out in this study is that, that there's, American Indians are seen as two things. You know, they're seen as a people that have not progressed beyond the 18th century who live in poverty, or number two, that uh, while they may look, you know, with they may dress in beads and feathers, that they're absolutely wealthy, you know, because of the casinos, you know, that uh, every Indian nation is supposed to have. But we know, you know, that only 15% of all American Indian nations have a casino, and that uh, all the casinos in Indian country combined make up only 1% of all gaming operations in the United States, 1%. But people think one or the other, you know, we're very rich or very poor. There's no middle class for native, you know, for Indian country. Why is it that the press, do you think, uh, kind of focuses on those opposite extremes? Is it lack of knowledge, lack of awareness? Wh where does this fit into the spectrum of news gathering and stories? That is a good question, Paul. And, and let me tell you, the because the I like to get to the roots of things, you know. Uh, and I did a study of of uh, newspaper editors. And uh, the, the question that I asked was, where did you learn most about American Indians? And the number one answer was television. 
and universities and public schools were an option that they could have checked off in that study. Uh, and so what we're learning is, is that people who write about American Indians don't know anything about American Indians. And um, I did a study, you know, because you should learn that in school. So I did a study with teachers to find out where they uh, have learned about American Indians. And the number one answer was television. And so uh, I did a study then to find out, well, there must be a requirement. There's got to be a diversity requirement before you graduate, right? There is a diversity requirement. And uh, teachers, you know, I have a degree in teaching. Teachers can actually take a course called uh, ballroom dancing, history of, uh, history of jazz, uh, people, plants, and places, and meet the diversity requirement. But that has nothing to do with American Indians or with African Americans or Hispanic or uh, Latino Latinos or Asian cultures. It has nothing to do with real diversity. Nothing. And so what are we teaching, you know, the, 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 the future communicators, the people who become newspaper editors or television producers or public relations officials? You know, what are we teaching these people who communicate to the masses? We're not teaching them anything about Indian country because the teachers, the producers, the people know very little about it, if anything at all. Does it provide a, a need? Does it, does it tell you that there's a need for Native Americans to get into the education system at the university level and, and Absolutely. be there? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there should be, what there should be, you know, frankly, is there should be a mandate, you know, for teachers. Because if you go to the top of the pyramid, the one thing that we all have in common, and anybody who's consuming this media right now that you're producing, we, the one thing that we've all had in common is that we've all had teachers in common. So if we, can, if we can mandate that teachers have four semesters or four full courses of, of um, diversity studies, a course in Afri African American studies, a course in American Indian studies, a course in uh, Latin, Latina studies, and Asian studies, mandate that these teachers learn these things before they become teachers. Then when they begin to teach these things in classes, the students will have a broader understanding, a more complete understanding of what diversity really is in the United States. You see some progress on that issue of diversity and understanding in the country? I don't. I wish I could say yes, if there's, a, there's, a, there's a stronger understanding, but I, I'll bet even money you know, that if you, uh, uh, if you put a group of, of educators into a room and ask them, when does Ramadan start and when does it end, that they'll not know. And if you ask them what it is, they'll not know. If you ask them what Yom Kippur is, they'll not, they're, they know maybe it's about this time of year, but they don't know what it means. Um, and certainly if you ask them, well, I need to be excused, you know, because I have to go back home to the reservation for a ceremony. They're like, well, what kind of ceremony? What do you mean? But we know that we can't talk about ceremony. So if they have a broader understanding, you know, if they, if they, could, if they could learn it first, because I think teachers, you know, there's a special place in heaven for teachers, you know. There really is. And they're the, they're the salt of this earth. And we go to them, and we even... Our native people tell our children to listen to your teachers. And our teachers want to teach us, but if they don't know it, they can't teach it. That's why it needs to be mandated before they become teachers. If someone was interested in getting a hold of you and going to Penn State, you'd help them out? How would they reach you? Absolutely. You know, just send me an email. That's the easiest way to reach me. And you can email me at apache at psu.edu. I want to thank you, John, for contributing this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.